guys, welcome back to the Culico YouTube channel where we do all things fabrication, engineering, and design. Today's video is very special. It's the first look at the finished KC 1200, a custom bike project that we've been working on at Culico for almost a year. This is a one-off Harley Davidson road racer. It was entirely CAD modeled and built in house. Aside from our outsourced vendors like our CNC machinists, 3D printers, laser and water jets, but we'll get into more of that later. In today's video, I want to do an overview of the bike and explain what process and material was used to achieve each component. And those of you that are new here, I would really appreciate if you hit that like and subscribe button as the growth of this channel really keeps me motivated to do projects like this. For those that are subscribers of this channel already, it's great to have you back. And with that being said, let's dive in. Okay, to start off, the power plant is a 1200cc Buell Sportster engine. As for general chassis geometry, it's about a 56 to 57 inch wheelbase. 24 degree head tube angle and adjustable swing arm angle in the rear you could run zero degrees up to 13 or 14 degrees wheels and tires are 17 inch marchesini road race wheels with pirelli diablo tires as for brakes i use brembo front and rear as for the front i use gp4 rx calipers and rcs masters and levers as for the chassis or the frame of the bike it was certainly the most time consuming project on this build it's a trellis style hammer formed frame a trellis grabs the engine like this and does not have bottom frame rails in which the actual engine is a stress member of the chassis the frame is made out of 071 or 71 thousandths wall 4130 chromoly steel it has a proprietary two to one triangle link suspension in the rear that i designed it's not a revolutionary design but it is one off to this bike as i mentioned it is a hammer form chassis i won't get into what that is too deep but there is another video on this channel that explains it in detail but simply put you're hammering sheet metal around bucks to be able to get obscure frame shapes so you're not limited to round square or rectangle tubing so the entire frame was hammer formed and you can see on the down tube here it's a kind of a gooseneck teardrop shape the spine of the frame underneath the tank is the same way it's got a long taper to it the swing arm dropouts are tapered all of these parts were hammered around bucks and then welded together hollow out of the 071 chromoly steel you can see how the chromoly was hammered around a buck it has a filleted edge here and then the seam is welded together on top and as for the suspension I was telling you about it's a triangle link dog bone setup that I modeled and had machined out of 7075 aluminum and black anodized it's about a two to one rear wheel rate some other parts of the hammer form chassis you can see the down tube here has some obscurely shaped components in the front that pick up the front engine mounts and then as you come up top here, you can see how it's goosenecked. It has kind of a teardrop shape. And that's what's neat about hammer forming is you can make about any shape you want. All right, so I flipped the bike around here and the next thing I wanted to talk about was the subframe. The subframe is also comprised of 071 chromoly, but it wasn't hammer formed. It was modeled in a way that you could actually break it into shape. So I modeled it in CAD, exported it as a flat model with bend lines in it and then bent it into shape. And there's a large hollow cavity on the inside here, which houses an auxiliary fuel cell. So under the seat here, this entire cavity of the subframe here is an additional fuel cell to hold more fuel. Why did I do that? Well, a couple reasons. Most importantly, I wanted to maximize my fuel load on board. Two, I prefer the look of a smaller main fuel cell. I think it looks attractive. And three, I thought the broke sheet metal subframe design was kind of cool. The next major components I would say is the bodywork, the tail unit, and the main fuel cell. It was all comprised out of 080 or 80 thousandths, 5000 series aluminum.
Next, I'd like to show you the foot controls. These were CAD modeled and then machined out of 6061 aluminum and black anodized. The actual knurled pegs were machined in-house on manual machines. Now this is the brake side, of course, and then this is a tow guard to protect you from the chain. Here's another one on the back side, which is actually carbon fiber, master cylinder, and brake fluid reservoir. The other side is the gear selector. Same process, CAD modeled and CNC'd out of 6061 aluminum. The pegs were made in-house. Black anodized. You can see how I picked it up off the case primary. And then there's a linkage to a little titanium pivot down here, which brings you up to the actual gear selector there. Since we're right here, the primary is kind of interesting. I started off with a stock primary cover. I altered a few things and made a custom removable cover on the front. And then for the actual clutch, I went to a hydraulic clutch setup with a removable flange or adapter for the hydraulic cover. To continue on the machine work theme of the bike, the most difficult manual machining project I did on this build were most certainly the push rod tubes. These were manually machined on lathes and mills in-house out of 6061 aluminum. They're adjustable three-piece push rod tubes where you have your base that tightens against the case, you have your tube that seals on the underside of the cylinder head. You thread those two apart, and then you have your lock nut to lock the two together. The next thing I'd like to show you guys is some of the 3D printed components, which includes the headlight cowl, the front fender, this entire bottom fairing here underneath the engine, and the velocity stack. So all of these parts are multi-jet fusion printed MJF black parts. These three parts are raw MJF black, but the front fender I decided to paint gloss black just because I thought it looked a little nicer. I use MJF a lot for finished parts on my projects. As it has a nice smooth surface finish, I think it looks good and it's also very strong and durable. Like you can use these parts and it lasts. It holds up to the heat and the sun and most importantly the vibrations. So I wanted to show you some of these parts close up. Here's your headlight cowl. Front fender. Velocity stack. And for the most fun part is the bottom fairing. And I wanted to explain this part a little bit more in detail. So it's nested real nice underneath the engine in the chassis. And you can see there's a removable screen in the front. And what that does is the fairing captures air in the front, transfers it through the body. There's an oil cooler and a voltage regulator in the back here that gets cooled and then the air bleeds out of the back. I was really proud of this part as it was a very elaborate CAD model. Next, I wanna show you guys the exhaust. It's comprised all of one millimeter CP1 titanium. It's a two into one collector system with equal length headers. We'll get up close on some of the welding here. It's starting to color in nice as I've been putting miles on this bike and heat through the exhaust. And then here's the collector, X collector tailpipe setup. And I just love the tips and the screens on the end. It's very, very MotoGP inspired but I couldn't be happier with the way the exhaust turned out on this thing. So I'd like to finish up with just some miscellaneous details of the bike. So like I said, Marchesini wheels, we've got a Renthal rear sprocket, 
up in the subframe here, I nested the shock adjuster with just the knob hanging out. It's kind of cool so you can access it when you're rolling down the road, not like you ever would. Here's your rear fuel cell, your auxiliary cell, tucked underneath the seat here, and it's fitting. Headed over to the fuel supply on the carburetor. You access the fuel fill through this foam cutout. There's another fuel cap right there. I thought about doing something elaborate, but I just thought this cutout was simple, clean, and kind of neat. And up here we have a matching fuel cap, just a little larger. I use aircraft caps. You can see Cullico just vaguely in the gas tank there. I used IMA road racing triple clamps, Domino throttle, Domino grips, the RCS Brembo series, masters and levers. You can see the super blue brake fluid in the reservoirs for the brake and the clutch. That's actually a product I had to import from overseas because you couldn't get it in the States. I thought it would be cool to have the blue fluid visible on this bike. I also used a road race style accessory switch where you've got on off, engine start, and lights. I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but I used a CBR 1000 front fork setup. That's worked really nice. Another detail is I modified the stock cam cover pretty heavily. I cut it off on the bottom here and cut it up through here and just made it very minimal and exposed the oil pump. That, that was pretty common for the Harley Davidson Sportster style race bikes is to cut that cover. So I thought that looked kind of neat. Of course, you got to drill speed holes in your counter shaft sprocket. You can see the little chain tensioner underneath there, your chain roller to make sure it rolls over the swing arm nice and through that pocket. And here's your little LED tail lights hanging out back here in the very tip of the tail unit. License plate is held on by magnets and safety wired off. It's kind of cool how you can see the shot going through the swing arm there. And that shows another really neat hammer form component of the chassis, that radius out brace and the swing arm. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's overview of the KC1200. I'm going to be doing a lot of content with this thing moving forward. So there's going to be new videos of this thing running and riding and everything else. But I really enjoyed doing this video about the fabrication processes and the materials used and how we achieve the components because that's what we do on this channel is fabrication and engineering. So I hope you guys were able to learn something here at the very least, get inspired on your own projects. And as always, I'm rooting for you on your fabrication journey. And we'll see you next time on the Cully Co. YouTube channel. See you later.